Okay, we have now saved in three formats out of Illustrator. We've saved as an EPS, I'm gonna mark them all as purple. We've saved as an SVG, and we've saved as an AI. Notice that the EPS is the only format that doesn't give you a preview, which is kind of weird, but that lets you know that EPS is really for Adobe products. So this is what you do not do, and I showed you this last time, you do not click on your EPS and open it with Photoshop. And now I have Photoshop 2025 on this computer. Which means I need to uninstall the older ones because they take up way too much space. So this is what you do not do. And I'll be able to tell through the way it rasterizes your color. You do not open it in Photoshop because it will force you to rasterize it. And why go to all the trouble of saving a vector format just to rasterize it? So instead, this is what you want to do. You want to open up Photoshop on its own. So I'll open up Photoshop, right? And because we have a new version just released, I have to get past all of the, the new intro stuff. Do, 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 do. And now I'm going to say new file, or you could say file new. Didn't want to open that. Let's say file new. And we're setting up our pixel space. This is also going to be our first print ready project. So for the midterm, I'm going to set this with my name, Carl, assignment four, black shape logo. But because I am making it print, print ready, I'm going to say at the end to print. Because I'm saving lots of different files. So now this will have print at the end of it. And then before I hit create, I need to set what my pixel dimensions are. I'm going to change it to inches. And we're going to use our standard for the lab, 8 inches, which will be true for all of your midterm prints, 8 by 10 inches by the studio resolution for printing, which is 350, which is 50 above the standard minimum. So 8 by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. Because we're bringing in a vector file, we can make this any size imaginable and it will come in as cleanly as it can. Then I say create. Okay. Now, I want you to think of this white space as the inside of a mat. So I can turn my camera on really quick so it's in the video. So this is how our prints work. We have a black mat. The black mat is 11 by 14 inches on the outside. The inside of the window is 8 by 10 inches. This is a double mat, so it has this extra little white lip. Don't worry about that. We print on paper that is 8.5 by 11, letter size paper. So that there's an overlap between the paper and the window. But the window is 8 by 10 inches. So when you look at Photoshop, I want you to think of this being the black of the mat and this being the white of the paper showing through the window. Right, so this, the inside of the mat. All right, so now how do I bring my black shape logo into it to print? What I do is I get my EPS file, the one that doesn't have a preview, and I drag and drop it. Right, and then I can use option. Because it's Photoshop, it's already going to lock your proportions, but I can use Option to shrink it or to grow it. Now, because you dragged it in and it's an EPS, it's going to center itself exactly based on your vector shapes. And I'm going to give you this little hint. This window, when you buy it, says that it's 8 by 10 inches, an 8 by 10 window, 11 by 14 outside. But in actuality, they don't trust you. So they give you an extra quarter of an inch that they bite in. So actually, this is half inch smaller on each dimension than 8 by 10. It's actually 7 and a half by 9 and a half. All that is just to say you want to give yourself white space around your logo. You don't need a ton of white space. It's what you think looks good. But I would say that is too much white space. And then this is too little. So somewhere between there. 
and then hit return. And now when you zoom in, you'll notice that you have pixels, but the pixels are generated from a smart object vector that can be resized at any time and it will always print as cleanly as it can within the pixels that you give it. Because we're doing eight by 10 by 350, this is the perfect amount of pixels for printing. Why not have a thousand pixels per inch if a vector can do it? Well, because if you put too many pixels per inch for printing, then it will buffer while it's printing. And it will actually slow down the print job and might even stop the print heads before it's finished. And then the inks dry at different rates. And if the inks dry at different rates, then they don't all dry together at the same sheen. So that's why you want 350 at eight by 10. You could go up to 600 if you want, but it's gonna print the same way and it's gonna print faster at eight by 10 by 350 pixels per inch. Okay, now we can save this and we're going to save it as our PSD file, right? So this is Carl assignment four, black shape logo to print. As a PSD file, I'm gonna save it to the desktop so I know where to find it and organize it later. Good. All I would need to do to upload this to Canvas, I'll go ahead and do that as well, is turn off the background so I see the checkerboard. And then I'm going to say file, save a copy. And even though it has to be raster to go onto Canvas, I want it to be a PNG format because the PNG will not have the white background. And if I were going to put a logo on a website, it would be a PNG. But it's a PNG derived from a vector file. So where is that PNG? It's on my desktop. Let me find it on my desktop. Mark it orange. That's what I mark the ones I bring into Canvas. I'll just put them here. This is my black shape logo PSD. I'm gonna bring that into my folder. So along with my refined sketch, which is somewhere in here, <laughs> I have my file for Canvas now. If I go to Canvas, before I continue, I'm going to post it. This is the second requirement. It's called a black shape vector and this is what matters the most. But I'm saving it, even though it's a vector file, I'm it's saved as a PNG out of Photoshop. It could be photo P as well at eight by 10 inches. Fits nicely within eight by 10 inches at 350 pixels per inch PPI. And now let's post that. So I take that PNG I just drag and drop it in, and you're gonna see how much cleaner it looks than my refined sketch, right? Because I used vector programs, in this case, Illustrator, to make it. You could also use vector.com. And I made some tweaks, like I put that pupil in. All right, so now we've got are two requirements. Our third requirement is to add color. So if you look at the assignment, we always have the requirements here with the past student example. Now we're gonna add color variation. Again, for printing. And then we'll choose which one we wanna print. So I go back to Photoshop and I'm going to make a duplicate of my black shape vector smart object. I'm not gonna rasterize it. Instead, I just hit Command J, duplicate. Now on that duplicate, I'm going to double click. I'll turn on the white background because that helps, but double click. And now I can play with color. So color overlay is the most basic way to do a color version variation on your black shape logo. You know, you can pick any color you want and just fill it. I'm gonna do a variation on our campus colors because I'm doing my kind of modified naval Nico, right? So that is a color variation. Is it super exciting? No. 
but it is a color variation. And what's nice is it's all done with just effects on the smart object. I never need to rasterize it. I keep it as a vector object. Okay, but what are some other effects we might like? And you can look at color logos that you want to be inspired by. Maybe I want to give it a gradient. Right? And maybe I want to choose a gradient. I have this collection called anti-gradients I like. It just saves me some time. But maybe I do something like that with the bright green at the bottom. But then I'm going to change these to a, a dark blue. And then change this to more like the campus blue. So you can play around and find variations you like. We're going to be using this more when we get into type design and doing color variations on logo types and title flags. Then I can also play with the scaling of it. You know how far it goes. And this green is a little toxic, so I'm going to mellow that out a bit and maybe find a step in between the green and the blue I want it to pass through, like that. Maybe deaden this blue a little bit. This is all kind of fine-tuned to get a nice kind of production color. When you do the intense, most saturated colors, those aren't going to be able to match, be matched by printers as well. So that's a gradient. This was the full color overlay. This is the gradient. Then I can play with the opacity of one over the other, right? So if I want it more subtle, I can kind of mix that green into everything just a little bit. And that's starting to look more official, right? But there are other things you can do as well. You can do drop shadows. I'm going to make it a little bit darker, a little bit smaller, just to help it stand out a little bit on that white background. Or you can do things like strokes. And I like doing strokes here instead of in Illustrator, because here I can choose whether the stroke is on the inside of my shape or on the outside of my shape or split down the middle, whereas Illustrator can only ever give you split down the middle. So I'm going to actually go on the inside so that my full shape is preserved. So I have a stroke, I have a drop shadow, I have a gradient, I have color. I could even give it texture. Now texture is tricky because this is just a repeated pattern. And the one I like to use is water for the most kind of simple diffused pattern. And then play with the scale because I just want to make this subtle. And the depth, make it more subtle. So now my color variation has all this going on inside of it versus just the black shapes. So you play around with it. If I'm happy with it, I hit Command S and I save it. And in this same file, I have my black shape logo and to print, and I have my color logo to print. But to submit it to Canvas, I turn off the background and I say, file, save a copy, and output it as a PNG. But how can I make sure I don't overwrite my black shape logo? Well, this is going to be my color shape or my color logo. Not only color, but you can also have effects like drop shadows, like glows, like texture. And I'm going to do that to the desktop as a PNG. And that is my final component. Now, what if... I wanted to have red and white stripes, right? So what I can do is save with my magic wand just certain parts of my logo, like this part, and then duplicate just that part. That will rasterize it, but then I can use different effects on that. So just for this, I'm going to leave the texture, leave the stroke, but I'm going to turn off the gradient overlay and I'm going to change the, the color to be red. Like the red of a flag. Actually, I don't want red there. I want, well, maybe I do want red there. 
I'm going to put it up 